Welcome to the Health Wrap. Hey, Carla. Hello, Carolyn. I see a little flicker there uh, with the oh, fireplace. Went out and got the wood and brought it in and started a little fire. Yeah. <laughs> it's a <laughs> flicker of a switch. How you doing? <laughs> I'm fine. You know, I'm really excited that we're going into the holiday season. And I know there are a lot of other things going on in the nation too. And a lot of the health care professionals are concerned about us going into Christmas and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and celebrating the holiday because we're seeing an uptick again. Yes, we are. Well, we all survived the election, praise God. And we are expecting a transition next month. And that transition will entail uh, President-elect Biden and uh, Vice President-elect uh, Kamala Harris. Um, they were introducing already their COVID-19 advisory board, which will have three co-chairs, one of them being Dr. Marcella Nunez-Smith, um, who's quite a heavy hitter. But here's the deal. Um, President-elect Biden said dealing with the coronavirus pandemic is one of the most important battles our administration will face, and I will be informed by science and by experts. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, as my grandmother was saying. I mean, we've been saying that since March, that we wanted to pay attention to the science, not to which way the wind was blowing, uh, which person who popped up and claimed they were a doctor and they had some advice and what you should do, but to pay attention to the science. And the fact that he is starting before he has even been inaugurated into the office, I think is encouraging. Um, we've also heard from our experts on Docs on Call, we needed a plan. We've never had a national plan. So as we look in this show at the year in review, we are really hoping we can put it in our rear view mirror and that we are heading in a right direction with a national plan. And that's um, funny that you said that because, and we'll talk to Dr. Hildreth a little later, the uh, president and CEO of Meharry. That was one of the things that he said when I talked to him this week is that we need a national strategy. And he didn't care about people trying to stand in the way because if they do stand in the way, there will be people falling and it will be very sad this winter. Yeah, he said that from the very beginning. And, you know, I am thankful. You know, people ask you about Judgment Day, Carla, and what will it be on Judgment Day for you? And and I can at least say that we listened and we've told people since March, pay attention to the science, make the best decisions for your family, and, and have repeatedly, you know, played our public service announcements with Dr. Hildreth and shared them with lots of organizations where he said, we've got to have a national plan. We can't open this up willy-nilly, which is what we did, and look where we are. Over a quarter of a million people. Right, and, and it's, it's sad that it had to become a political football. And um, when you're playing like that, nobody wins. As we gear up to say goodbye to 2020's daunting days of battling the coronavirus in a pandemic, the medical community foresees a fierce fight as 2021 rolls in. What's really on my mind and heart right now is the pandemic and watching, watching unnecessary disease and death, it's, it's, it's just <laughs> sort of tearing me apart. Mid-November, COVID-19 ravished the Navajo nations, the 27,000 square foot area, which spans parts of Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah, was on lockdown for three weeks due to an uncontrolled spread. Previously closed parks and recreation areas will remain shut down until 2021. The best thing to have happen would be to have a national, national lockdown. The CDC has already issued articles for February 2021 related to controlled measures for long-term care facilities. Several universities, including Florida A&M, are punting the plans they had for several spring sports. For Florida A&M, those roads crossed on Wednesday, canceling football, volleyball, and indoor track and field for this spring. And many college administrators have crashed the ritual spring breaks. We decided we would start the semester a week late, February 1st, to avoid the most challenging time of the year where flu, virus, and COVID could interact. And that would give the students a little bit longer of a break between semesters, and we would then forego the spring break. 
You know, I was on death's doorstep. COVID-19 survivor Graylin Young and his family are blessedly awaiting a new year to take off. In March, he flew back from his brother's funeral in New York. He had no idea that once he arrived in Atlanta, a few days later, he would land in a hospital on a ventilator in a coma. Of course, the idea of dying crosses your mind pretty heavily. You're struggling like that for your breath, you start thinking about, you know, is this it? Is this the final breath I'll be taking? So what have we learned about COVID-19? Dedicated doctors and frontline workers have learned how to save more lives because of scientific findings, says infectious disease expert, Dr. James Hildreth, the president and CEO of Meharry Medical College. At first, when people went to the hospital, if they were placed on the ventilator, there's a great likelihood they would not survive and leave the hospital. But the clinicians have gotten really good, or much better, I should say, at treating COVID-19. And so now, uh, I think there's 30% mortality rate for people in ventilators, when at first that was much higher. So I think the treatment is better. But clinicians also learned the entire body can be viciously attacked. We now know that uh, the virus is not just limited to causing problems in the lungs. It causes problems in our blood vessels. It has the potential to have neurological, uh, create neurological deficits. That's coffee. <laughs> Braylon had some high hurdles to get over, temporary dialysis, a heart rhythm issue, an ulcer, blood masses, excruciating pain. His left side was paralyzed. We love you. We love you. Hey, oh man. After being released for nearly spending a couple of months in the hospital, Graylin's wife wept as he prepared to go to a rehab facility for 32 days. Still today, he has a team of specialists and therapists who work with him. Well, let's do some dishes. And my wife is thrilled that I'm able to stand long enough to wash the dishes again. She so says she's thrilled about that. We use a lot of forks and spoons in this house. There's no way that a thousand people should be dying every day in the United States of America. That spends three and a half trillion dollars a year on health care. It's just, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I get a little emotional about this because there's so many people dying who don't, they don't have to die. And it's just going to accelerate the longer we wait. And that's why we need a, we need a national strategy. And Carolyn, you know, one of the simple things, which is the first line of defense, that it's just a simple piece of cloth that you can cover your face with or shield to take care of yourself and your family. And we're going to be, this is a little preview of we're going to have something on our Facebook and our YouTube, but I want to give you a preview um, of Nurse Carlette Reed Winfrey talking about the importance of the mask. We finally have gotten used to wearing masks and now people are wanting to make it a fashion accessory, but it still has to first and foremost be protective. So uh, what we tell people, the main thing is that we want is a mask that fits you well that fits you so well that you kind of forget that it's there. You're not fiddling with it because we see a lot of people that are just like doing this all the time. And ideally you should not be touching your mask because the idea is that there's germs on there. I always think of telling people it's like the underwear of your face now. So you're not going around touching your underwear. You should not be going around touching your mask all the time. Okay, as we were talking a little earlier, it is time for Christmas in a couple of weeks. And you're not gonna believe this. So there is an order to promote benefits of COVID-19, of the vaccine. And a major federal campaign, according to the Wall Street Journal, is being offered a special vaccine deal to an unusual set of essential workers. Can you guess? Can you guess, Carolyn? I an see unusual, you I see a little beard. Santa, Santa Claus performers. So as part of the plan, a top Trump administrator 
administrative official wanted Santa performers to promote the benefits of the vaccine in exchange of early access ahead of the general public. And, you know, it sounds a little weird. So this plan has been scrapped. Bye bye. Yeah, bye bye. Um, the good news, though, is the vaccine news. Uh, at least two companies uh, that have confirmed they're ready to go to the FDA uh, with approval, seeking approval uh, to get the vaccine rolled out. Um, and so we should expect to hear more on the vaccine in certainly coming weeks as, as that becomes available. Um, this pandemic has changed everything for so many of us. It's changed our lives completely. In fact, it's changed the way people are giving. You know, generally, I think you remember this back in the day at the station, they'd see if we'd come down and ring the red bell or ring the bell at the red kettle. Well, that's totally changed these days in part because of, of what we're going through with COVID. Well, yeah, I mean, in several states, the Salvation Army has set up contactless donation setting opportunities, and they're using Apple Pay and also Google Pay, as well as other, other RQ codes that can be scanned uh, to give to people in an easy way. And, you know, that's a great way to start your holiday and your socially distancing. So throughout the show, we will highlight certain organizations that we think are deserving to get that extra support at the end of this year, right after a break, a year in review of COVID-19. Stay tuned. You are not hidden. There's never been a moment you were forgotten. You are not hopeless Though you have been broken Your innocence stolen I will send out an army To find you in the middle of the darkest night I will rescue you Boys and Girls Clubs are providing millions of meals to communities, child care to first responders, and virtual programming. We're doing whatever it takes to help families get through this crisis, but we can't do this alone. Visit bgca.org slash relief fund. So a lot of people say, Carla, in order to keep moving forward, not only must you take one step at a time, but you must be willing to look back occasionally and evaluate the past, no matter how painful it is. Looking back, of course, lets you know whether or not you're heading in the right direction. So let's look back right now at how this all started, COVID-19 in 2021. That's a look back. Now the big question is, what will we do going forward? We talked earlier about the administration that's coming in in January and their plans and already having a COVID-19 uh, commission or panel that is advising uh, the president-elect. So uh, we've got some things that are certainly promising to, to point to at this point. Well, speaking of promising, we have a wonderful 
a bevy of beautiful and bright young ladies who are interns from the Gwen from Simmons University, Gwen Eiffel School of Journalism, and some from other departments there as well. And so we wanted to ask them, what do they think and how do they see the future while we are in COVID-19? My name is Hannah Chestnut and I'm an intern for Docs on Call. I've been my learning job. remotely for the past semester and so far my plan is to take it one step at a time and listen to health professionals and see and wait for all of the information to come out. And um, yeah, so I'm learning remotely and that's been really great so far. I'm a first year student at Simmons. All of my professors are awesome and super understanding and helpful and it's been really great. I am planning for 2021 to be just as tumultuous as this year unfortunately as a health professional student it's hard to know exactly what we'll be doing and where we are if the numbers continue to trend and rise as they have we might not be going on clinicals we'll definitely won't be on campus so everything is up in the air but as finicky as that is i'm super excited to continue learning and loving and living in this time where we're not really sure what could happen next. So here's to 2021. I hope it's better than this year at least. Uh, for uh, looking ahead in spring 2021, I am planning on attending virtual school through to you um, on the Simmons University platform. And I am hoping, it, hoping to be staying updated on the Pfizer vaccine that's just been released that is 95% effective. And I am just going to make sure that I'm informed rather than misinformed about what's really going on since this is affecting many, many people. And I'm just hoping that um, people are just staying safe and taking the right precautions. So my 2021 is going to look very different this year. I'm taking online classes again, which will put me at a year and a half of online classes. So I haven't even been on campus yet for my degree. Um, next semester, I'm supposed to do an internship for my program, um, and usually those are in person at an institution in the area, um, but this year it might be an online project, which is not as good, but it is something that I have to do to complete my project in time. And the more, most important thing about the quarantine and about going into 2021 quarantining is I'll be going on almost a year and a half of not seeing my mom in person. Um, so I'm really sad about that and hoping to see her next summer, but it's still so up in the air. <laughs> um, so hoping that we can get together soon and hoping that this quarantine ends as quickly as possible. Hey everybody, my name's Nicole and I'm a second year at Simmons University. My spring 2021 was supposed to look like me studying abroad at either Thailand, Australia, or a semester at sea. But because of COVID, my plans have changed. But now I get to spend more time with my family and especially how I am getting older and I probably won't be spending as much time as I am with them as I am now. But I was also excited because I recently found out that my hometown close friends will be staying at home next semester due to the fact that they didn't really like their fall semester because of the guidelines that were put in place for COVID, which is understandable because they were just stuck in their dorm rooms and obviously that's not fun. So they'd rather just stay at home. So I'm just excited to spend more time with my family and finally get to see some of my closest hometown friends. So stay safe and enjoy the show. I love that. I love them. Yes. <laughs> And I love yeah. the quote, I'm going to keep learning, loving, and looking forward. That was great. Yes. And they remind, Carolyn, remember when you were an intern? Oh, well, I remember when I was an intern. Yeah, that was like our life, right? In order to get to yes. what trying to get to. Yeah, this has yes. been, uh, you know, I've said to people, there has been a few essence of silver lining here and there. And this certainly has been uh, one piece in terms of being able to work with these young people. It's just amazing. Absolutely. Well, you know, I was thinking the other day, what do you give the person who has everything for a holiday gift? And I'm thinking a chance to live, meaning we need to look forward and think about how we are going to continue to stay safe and healthy. So I mentioned earlier that I had talked to Dr. Hildreth about 
what we've learned and how do we move forward in 2021. And I also talked to one of my good, good dear friends, uh, Raylan Young, who is a COVID survivor. And he also talks about this is something that you want to make sure that you are taking care of yourself as we go forward. Because a lot of people are watching, waiting, and worrying about what's going to happen with COVID-19 in 2021. And so concert professionals are hoping that the show will go on in 2021. Following news of pharmaceutical company Pfizer's early results on a new COVID-19 vaccine. According to previous reports from Billboard News, Ticketmaster is reportedly working on a fan safety plan that includes using smartphones to verify fans' vaccination status. Ticketmaster has since said it does not have the power to set policy around safety entry requirements, which includes vaccines or testing protocols. So we'll just have to stay tuned to, to find out a little bit more about what the plans will be regarding that. We'll hear more, I'm sure. We'll be back, though, right after this break. As doctors, we, we know, know African Americans are more likely to acquire and die from complications of the COVID-19 virus. Why? Because people of color suffer from higher rates of chronic medical conditions. Like, like diabetes, diabetes and, obesity. and obesity. High blood pressure. Heart, heart and, and kidney, kidney disease. disease. And asthma. All of these lower our immune system and the ability to fight off viruses. Being an essential worker and even using public transportation increased the risk of getting COVID-19. But, but we, we can, can better protect, protect ourselves, ourselves and, and others, others from, from the virus. virus. Washing your hands, not, not touching, touching your, your face, face, wearing a mask in public, social distancing, eating better, better exercising, getting, getting more sleep, sleep, and visiting a primary care provider for health checks will we'll all make a difference. difference. If you have questions, call the number on the screen and visit our website. Let's, Let's work, work together, together to, to save, save lives and beat this pandemic. pandemic. Hey, Jim Rob fam. As you know, there's a huge shortage of protective masks due to COVID-19. In this difficult time, we must all come together to support those who are risking their own health and safety each day to protect us. And with your help, we are now able to give away these soft, breathable, washable, reusable masks to all first responders. You can also purchase these masks for your family right now at gymrap.com. That's right. Go to gymrap.com right now so we can get these masks to our heroes on the front lines. Let's make a difference in our community. Thank, Thank you. you. Jimrap.com. That's it. G Y M W R A P.com. What a great program. Again, we wanted to highlight some nonprofits and organizations that were doing really cool things around COVID. And so it's a great opportunity to do gifts or just to support them. Absolutely. What, what a beautiful family. And if you know an organization, um, because as we continue uh, going into 2021, there may be some organizations that you can tell us about that are doing good things to help in this fight against COVID-19. Absolutely. Well, we're ending on a good note as we like to do some good news, right, Carla? Yes, ma'am. So remember Carolyn, your friend um, came um, a few weeks ago uh, and we talked about plasma. So we want to catch up. I know that you know, she was one of your friends and, and we're always concerned about people and we like to follow up on stories like that as well. Yeah. Tina Torres is a very active businesswoman in South Carolina and uh, actually a friend on Facebook. And we know that our health rap airs on Facebook, but I reached out to Tina back then because I honestly didn't know about uh, a lot about the plasma drive and, and what it all entailed. But if you recall, Tina's best friend was Diana Thomas and she contracted COVID-19 and had been struggling with it. And that's when Tina actually decided to organize a drive to collect plasma that would later be used to provide a transfusion. Well, we wanted to check in and see actually how Diana was doing. And Tina tells us that her friend is doing much better. And in fact, she jumped the broom recently and tied the <laughs> congratulations to Diana on her nuptials. And so happy to hear she's doing better. It's um, It's been quite a year. We've got another one ahead of us. And as we said earlier, you just got to put one foot forward and keep going. We're excited to have on board our, our partners that have been with us all through this uh, process and uh, certainly look forward to our continued partnership with others. 
Uh, as you know, Docs on Call is produced with support from the W.K. Kellogg Foundation and interns from Simmons University. At Simmons, we are proud to partner with the Gwen Eiffel College of Media, Arts, and Humanities, the School of Social Work, the Program in Public Health, and the President's Advisory Council on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And Carolyn, we'd like to also thank all of, you know, we've had more African-American doctors than anyone in one time, you know, one season on our show. And we'd like to thank them and other doctors that we've had as well and nurses and uh, clinicians and psychologists and psychiatrists uh, who are doctors as well. But we really appreciate the advice and the compassion that they've shown uh, during a time like this. It indeed takes a village and we thank our village for being there and lifting us up and supporting us. And we'd like to wish everyone, our team members included, our producer, Rashonda Pratt, uh, everyone on our team who works so hard to make this happen. Thanks everybody and happy new year. <laughs>